This is the box. You can see all the screens poking out. So we got a sweat house going on in here. You see it? <laughs> the biscuits, the gravy. I dropped the whole goddamn yeah, platter over there. It's a PSF road trip. Pretty incredible, man. It's like five stars on wheels, you know what I mean? We fucking crashed. We are all 100% dead. <laughs> ETA, two minutes. How things change in Mount Vernon with the COVID situation? So the gym did have to close, but the guys who lived there full time, you know, they, they were still there. They couldn't leave. So I think they might have got some extra training in. So I'm really excited about the, the fight to win thing because, you know, I, I think a lot of the guys on there were kind of like sucking wind and, you know, they hadn't been training. And our guys, like I said, they, they couldn't leave. So really all they had to do was just like kind of train. So so I think that that's going to kind of give us the nod a little bit like on the you know, on, on their on, on their wind and all that, so. Oh yeah, they're ready to go. They're, they're always ready to go, man. They just stay ready. So we just blacked out the windows for them while they were in there. Just in case the health department came by, there's even a, a flap there, so you, you can kind of check that out, but. There they are. We do this about once a week. If they don't get out here and pick it up, the people drive by and they'll pick them up, they'll take them. If not, they'll come and get them, you know. It's like kids, you know, you gotta <laughs> teach them a lesson, I guess, so. How are things different here in the summertime? If you don't sleep next to a fan, it's horrible. Yeah, it's good to have the sheet down too. Yeah. And you, stick, you stick to all the stuff. Like if you're sleeping on one of the mats, you probably have to sleep on top of like the blanket or something. Otherwise you just stick to it. Or just have a fan like directly in your nostrils. So how are you uh, feeling about getting out there and competing again? I'm ready. Unlike the last time, I'm actually in good shape now. We're just going through like the Clothes that have been like mashed up in the corners. Like there's a lot of guys, so well, Jacob, sometimes right? clothes. We all share clothes, so yours, sometimes right? things get left oh, in certain places. No. So we're just yeah. kind of going through like the lost and found. <laughs> <laughs> so they just went and got them out of the dumpster. Now, now they got their attention. That's George's new van. Actually, he just bought. He's living in the back of it. Uh, Seven hundred bucks, I think he did. Oh, it's just showing you the. <laughs> So how long you been living in the uh, van for? Fuck man, I think almost a month now. I got it because it was 800 bucks. This old fucking carpet guy. Yeah. Had one owner, he was like, I'm just trying to get rid of it. And yeah, it's fucking sick. It's pretty tight, you got a hammock in here. How, how you like sleeping on this thing? Oh, it's the best, bro. It cradles you at nighttime. And it's so brutally hot that you just yeah. put fans underneath you. And you actually get a little bit cold. Even in the summertime here, so it's fucking, it's fucking sick. I just ran all the power to the gym. Yeah. I got extension cord. I got a TV right oh, here. Oh, nice. You're competing fight to win this weekend. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I feel fucking good, man. Probably the best I've ever felt, best ship I've ever been in. Uh, we haven't competed in months, man, so we're just fucking just itching to just go do something. We've just been training hard here with each other. That gets kind of old, you know, you want to go out and fucking kill someone new, so. Yeah, I'm excited because we got a gang of people going, so. My goal is to get underneath them, get behind them, fucking pick them up and slam them as hard as I fucking can. So, All right. if that doesn't work, then <laughs> probably, I don't know, tap them out some other way. But. So, buddy come this way. So this is the, this is the new addition that, that Andrew had built on. So about um, when the stimulus checks came, they called me in the middle of the night and said, dude, listen, we're rich. I thought they won the lottery. Yeah. And then they told me, we have, you're never gonna guess this, Two thousand dollars, two thousand dollars. You know what we can do? We're gonna build a house. So I said, "You're gonna build that? Where are you gonna build a house?" It's like, "Well, I was thinking next to the gym." So I said, "All right, buddy, sure, whatever. You can build a house." So I show up the next day, and there's about four guys back here, and then they're. Uh, this is what they're working on. It's Andrew's house. Good morning. Hey, good morning. How you doing? 
How you been, man? It's very early. I like your little house, dude. I like it too. Life better living out here? It's pretty sweet. Do you want to give us a little tour of this thing? It's a short tour. They're going to they're gonna catch you in the reel. <laughs> okay. Seven in the morning, tour of the box. Whatever the time it is right now. It's, it, it's, it, it, it's 1030, but close enough. <laughs> this is the box. It's semi-stable. I mean, you can lean on it and push on it a little bit, but don't push very hard, seriously. Yeah. That's not a fucking joke. And when you're inside, don't jump. And it turns out that making a tarp roof is suboptimal. So now I have a second roof that's being held down by bricks right now because I don't have the drill bit to drill in like those special screws that have rubber sill. I'm living in luxury right now, man. I do have a lock because A, bird might be trying to go in there and steal my Oreos. B, Mount Vernon people might be trying to steal my computer. Okay, <laughs> those are the only two things I care about. So we walk in past the multiple mosquito nets, okay? And then I've been slowly adding on to this. So I have my tool shed shelf over here, my fan shelf over there with the window. I'm very proud of the window because we did it better than the door actually. And you know, we like made it and then just cut it out and it seals really well where the door uh, does not seal at all. It's like it's got these massive gaps that I've been filling with foam. Yeah. And then over here we've got my other shelf. We've got my little gaming headset hook, which the nice part about owning your own place is you can just drill things. You know, I can be like, I feel like I need a shelf here. And then I just literally put a shelf there. Most of it's level, uh, ish. Okay, we're always gonna say ish. You can see all the screws poking out when we decided to do that ourselves. Uh, I love my bed. My bed is comfortable. It's got all the pillows. Because like people, after they saw the Daisy Fresh Part 2, they were sending us a bunch of pillows because they didn't want people sleeping on the tie pads. But they like to sleep on the tie pads. How many pillows did you guys get? Like 10 plus. Nice. And I have like seven of them. <laughs> Cause, <laughs> just because they don't even use them. They don't even want them. And I love pillows. You know, fluff is great. So then I have all the pillows in here. I put a carpet down so that people would feel more secure <laughs> walking because it seems nicer for the carpet right yeah like i don't sure. care i don't the wood splitters don't bother me but then like if the girls come in here they're like this seems dangerous you bring a lot of girls in here i plead the fifth <laughs> you know? bert said don't lie <laughs> When the coronavirus thing came, man, it was so tough on them because, you know, they've given up their families, you know, like like living around them. They've given up so much comfort. They've given up so much to be in that position. It's tough having someone tell you, not only can you not compete, and we don't know when the next time you're gonna be able to compete, you're not even supposed to train. So what do you do with your life when you've made this everything about your life? You know what I mean? It made it a little monotonous because like after a few months and you're ready to go compete normally, you know, you train yeah. for a month or two, do a competition, compete, 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 but instead we're just like daily grinding with each other. So you kind of get like lost in the progress a little bit. I mean, it, it sucked because for that moment you feel like we're not doing it for a purpose. Understanding that like it's for real, like nothing's going to happen, like that's stung, but it's, it, it's got to come back and we knew it was going to come back. So like, you know, we all just kept doing our thing. We didn't lose any guys. All our guys stayed here in the gym. No one left. You know, we all trained hard as fuck, and we just got it in, and now we're ready. We're gonna watch the Daisy Fresh, part one and part two. So, my favorite comment of all time is on, on one of the Daisy Fresh videos, they said, congratulations, you trained in a shithole. <laughs> I've actually screenshot most of the messages, and they're like, listen, you know, I'm from a small gym, or like I, I just stumbled across the thing and it, it, it was inspiring for me. You know, it's like, it's, it's actually reaching people in a way that it is super positive and I think that's a good thing. It, it definitely gave us a lot more uh, recognition and like just a lot of people put their eyes on us and a lot of people have been messaging us. They were just, man, surprised at how hard we continue to work, you know, with like the conditions that we live in. Yeah. They were like, dude, you guys are fucking animals. I think that they finally know now, after that film was released, that they belong. They finally feel and understand like what I've been telling them. They belong. They're the best. And everyone's going to see that soon. After the, the film came out, you know, people started sending all kinds of things, you know. There were a lot of top-level jiu-jitsu guys, like Roberto Jimenez. His mom and dad constantly sent stuff to the gym, you know. Craig Jones sent 
gift cards for the guys to go out and eat. It's heartwarming to know that so many people like cared and like sent stuff and really thought about the boys. Cause you know, it, 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 was, it was a time of need too. It was the worst time to be like a semi-professional jiu-jitsu athlete. Yeah. And so we, we completely ran out of money, un uh, entirely, zero dollars. We couldn't afford any food. And people were sending us like these boxes of ramen that me and Bert were able to literally survive on. I lost like 15 pounds in the, the quarantine because <laughs> we just ran out of food. We got probably 15 things of laundry detergent, which is awesome because at the time we didn't have any. Someone sent us an orange chicken gift card. And it actually had like $100 on it. So like the very start of the quarantine, we were eating like kings every day. <laughs> and then that immediately stopped when we ran out of the gift card. Everyone that sent us stuff, man, I, I just can't even express how much it meant to us, you know what I mean? It, it helps more than they realize. Who are some of the new faces that are around? So we got a couple upper belts, like colored belts, which was like huge for us, you know, because we always got a lot of like white belts and like blue belts. We got JB, who's a brown belt. He was actually on the podium with Andrew in the Daisy Fresh video uh, at the Nogi Worlds. He took bronze. It's his first brown belt tournament ever, and he freaking made it on the podium. I saw these guys, and they're always together and stuff, and I just wanted to be a part of something like that. It's like the first time I feel like I fit in in my whole life. It's been really awesome. One of my friends from another gym, he texted me about this gym. He sent me a link when I was in school and I was holding up the phone up to the ceiling while I was taking number two. And I just remember like seeing this video and I'm just looking up and I just remember saying to myself, this is where I need to be. Your Instagram name is the Hillbilly Hammer. Where did you come from? We were just sitting around at the house bullshit one day and Marshall, he just called me the Hillbilly Hammer and I was like, well fuck, that's gold right there. You ain't beating that. You gotta have something with a little flavor on it. So since the last time you guys were here, guys just keep showing up. We've got Jacob Couch, the Hillbilly Hammer. He's a fucking monster. And you just squeeze them. And when they tap, you don't let go. You don't let go. He's such a great addition to the team because his voice alone is like a character, you know what I mean? Hey, listen to me now. Hey, listen to me now. Hey, fuck protein. Hey, fuck testosterone. Fuck creatine. Fuck BCAAs. Right, you hear me? Get you some cold red. I'm 21 years old. I'm from Hazard, Kentucky. Pretty rough area. There's some hardship there for sure. He's scared. He's scared. He don't want that. I'm letting him get some good practice. He don't want that. Look at him. Watch it. He's just really great, dude. He's got these these stories from back home. You know, kind of like the, the Beverly Hillbillies type stories, man. I dropped the whole goddamn platter yeah, on that. The biscuits, the gravy, the Curry eggs, red, the bacon, the, the cold red. red. He's so funny, and his jujitsu is amazing on top of that. So he's like a wonderful addition to the team. But I think we've just about got and where he's gonna kind of like run rampant on those divisions, man. And I think he's really gonna kick some ass and open some eyes up. Before I officially came here, um, I won Nogi Worlds in 2018 as a blue belt. In 2019, I, did, I got second in Nogi Pan Ams at purple. And then at Nogi Worlds, I got third in my division and second in the open. How I found out about the place I, I competed against Andrew actually, I'm at a Fuji. And he comes out in full showy roll gear, his biceps bursting at the seam. I came and sit down, I was like, all right, I'm about to, I'm about to leg lock this son bitch. So I, I go to go under, boom, knee cut, six minutes side control. I'm like, God damn, this man just dropped the earth on me. So I kind of just found out about him after I competed against Andrew. And I was like, fuck, like this is, this is where I gotta be. This is where I gotta be. I, I, I couldn't ask for nothing better, honestly. At the end of the day, I'm truly happy. All my best friends, I get to see them every day. He's amazing, man. On and off the mats, he's, he's there for us. He's like a father figure, I guess. I never had that growing up, so that's really important to me. I, I want to be one of the best in the world and have my own gym and have a, have a bunch of world-class beaters would be ideal. Be able to support my family from this, travel the world and teach. Kind of like the ideal jiu-jitsu dream. I'll go wherever this thing takes me. I, it, it don't matter to me. I'll do what I gotta do to get what I need done. So this is the same computer. I haven't, I haven't done any massive upgrades to it because I'm poor as fuck at all times. I do have mismatching sticks of RAM in there. 
But again, it's kind of like the box, you know, we just kind of get what we can afford and we make it work. And it's not supposed to be pretty because we don't really care about pretty. You know, like I care about functional. What was it like quarantine? I know obviously you guys had to kind of shut down a little bit. For, for me, it was horrible because I can't mentally regulate my bipolar without constant training and moving towards a goal. You know what I mean? So it's like I end up getting super depressed. Uh, just hit a very, very low point and on top of like being super poor and not having any money, not, not being able to really train. We played a lot of video games. Uh, we kept up with our conditioning a little bit. Uh, it's hard to stay super motivated though. So you'd be all over the fucking place. Look, if you drown, I'll bite your guy, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> You got to swim, boy. I thought you were going to swim. You can swim. Goddamn wild. I can't idle, though. What do you mean? Hey, how'd you do that? What? What's your feet up to do like that? At least, like, two, three times a week. Like, after, like, a really hot one, like, sweating, like, nastiness, like, we'll come out here. And uh, just kind of like just get all the nasty sweat off. And when it's not full of the moss and stuff, it's really refreshing. But it's pretty nice, man. I can hold my breath longer than Cooch. No, you can't. I'm water. Take it. You should practice some idling in there. <laughs> practice your idling. You can't idle. No, 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 no. Don't quit now. You feel right. Hey, flying triangle in like this. <laughs> so for the fight to win walk out pretty big deal i've been saving these bear from show you all sent the guys these these are uh some warm-ups that they they released in 2017 these are the pants pretty here got a little saying right here what's that say look up bitch look up all right and then the back side back side of those so these are pretty well. They're actually tearaways. Yeah. This is the front. Show your roll symbol. It's got something right here. What's that say? Heads up, motherfucker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it's got the hood and then the show your roll here. We actually have a heat press. We heat press all this stuff on. So he's going to do I, that. They're only 300 bucks each, so. Just kidding. Not really kidding. <laughs> well, I'm trying to heat press this, but the heat press is like 300 degrees, and the material is like, um, it's not plastic, but it's close to it. So I think if I put it and I heat press it, it's just gonna melt the fucking pants. So we'll see. I'm not sure if it's gonna, all right. So I'll be off the team if this melts. I'm actually gonna go to Atos. I've already talked to Andre Galvao, but he mentioned something about me beating one of the Rotulo brothers. So. Every time I do it, I like put this down and I just like reach under here to like try to fix the thing and I bring it up and I fucking burn my hand every time. Oh fuck, see? I told you, I told you that happened. The hardest part is getting it straight. Like I put someone's shit on, and I put it fucking like upside down and sideways, and I felt so bad. Hey, yeah, it looks good, dude. I was freaked out. It actually doesn't look too bad. You guys had no faith in me. I mean, you put it on the wrong side. Oh, I did. No, I'm no. just kidding. Oh, my God. <laughs> we go again. Oh, we stamp it down over and over again. If you do it too long, and then it turns like. That fucking yeah. shit color it looks like George's fucking van. The rolling turds. It turns real brown. I actually burnt myself again, but I'm so tough that I didn't say anything. <laughs> Ain't that pretty. Yeah, that's it. Good work, Spatch. Once again, professionally done. Alright, so now I know that we can put it on. 
put it up a little bit more. You but should put it on. For the guys are going to be like super excited about because they don't know about them. Here, step in. I don't, want to, I don't want to break it, I was going slow. Um. Wow. I'm actually, I'm actually cutting down to 135 right now. I'm going to fight uh, Jordan Burroughs. He's meeting me down there with that weight class. <laughs> This is for our trailer park we're creating. <laughs> this is the Pedigo Submission Fighting Fighter House, basically. The gym, you know, was getting so many guys in it. And then when the whole COVID pandemic happened, you know, there wasn't enough room really. So I started renting this place for the guys. It's a small little two bedroom farmhouse. But the cool thing about it, the guys make it work. Multiple beds in there, everyone sleeps fine. We got about three acres of land and it's kind of like in the middle of nowhere, but still close enough to the gym. It's literally a two minute drive to the gym, so it's pretty neat. Hey, we're putting Michael Sears to work over here, boys and girls. Everything shut down from Corona, and we literally had too much time, so we made a garden. We popped up in two days. I had 10 and 12 of the guys most mornings. Part of our workout was on this tie bag, and it was empty when we first got it. Tad brought it, and then Tad found a old couch like way out there in the woods somebody carried it out there and chucked it and we took we ripped all the cloth off of it and we took all the cushions out and we filled this whole bag up with that couch and then we had to put a kettlebell somewhere up here in the top I don't know if you'll find it if you hit it but so now we got an awesome bag <laughs> see look this is one of my coon holes yeah man they've been digging back in there man now we got babies around here about this big, they're real cute. You feel bad getting mad at them for being in the garden, but it's my garden. It's just disrespectful, I just feel like that. This is an entire hotel. <sighs> look, how, look how slick these are. Now when we drive past those Gracie Baja guys, they'll just run right off the road for us. We don't even gotta push them. Alejandro got us this. This might be the best thing in the house. Presto electric skillet. You can feed 12 guys a night out of this sucker. And then we have two rice cookers that get abused every night. Every night. It's just what it's like every day. Everybody piled up. It's your friends. How many people do you think every night? Normally five, I think. Four to five minimum. The weekends, we like to get, get it heavy on the weekends. We do a lot of bonfires. We are doing s'mores a lot. Don't use graham crackers. Use Chips Ahoy, Marshmallow, Greasy Cup. That's how you do it. This is a... Uh, this is the luxury room. So normally, two guys sleep here. Adam sleeps here. We have an extra bed in the side room over here. Yeah, there's a little side room for us if someone brings a lady friend over. And everyone is fighting to get into this room every night. We go through the water so fast, we don't even have hot water right now. So we all just said, screw it. Look, we love living on top of each other. Yeah. It's good. It's just like with the jujitsu. Everyone's got to help each other. Everyone has their role and we found out a way to work it pretty good here. We're, we're nothing without this thing. So you're making your debut at Fight to Win this week, and how are you feeling about that? I'm excited, dude. I'm hungry as fuck to get back on the mat and compete. I feel fucking excited, man. I'm in the best shape I've ever been in my life, man. Cardio-wise, strength-wise, my mind feels sharp, timing feels sharp, so I'm just ready to go out there and, and kill. I feel like when I won the world, I feel really confident in myself. I'm in good shape, my technique is crisp, I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be really cool to be around all those big names and know that they're gonna be on the same mat I'm gonna be on, getting to see my teammates out there. I really love the lights. Lights do a lot for me, it's, it's, it's like a rush that I'm kinda addicted to now, I guess. My game plan, is to just go out there full throttle, man. I'm just gonna go out there and get in the guy's face and just go after it, go for the sub in any way, shape, or form. You said you're gonna put some biscuits and gravy on this guy. What do you mean by that? Well, I'm gonna come out. He's not gonna expect a good looking dude like me to be as, as quick and as strong as I am, so. It's just a country thing, I guess, really. Put the sauce on him. Just coming out, 
trying to kill motherfuckers, really. No deeper meaning. Ain't no Socrates or nothing, but. Man, I think the guys are ready. Like, look at them. They're all pushing 10, 10 minute rounds. They can do 10, 10 minute rounds. I think they're ready. This is my black belt debut. I'm in better shape right now than I was for the Donkey Worlds. <laughs> like, physically, I'm ready. To, my technique is fucking on fire. Like my passing stuff I've been working on for the last six months is so good. I got the really good dummy sweeps. I'm gonna do a lot of like reverse tail heba. I'm gonna I'm gonna wrestle up on him, and then once he's on his back, I'm going to pass him and I'm gonna do dirty things to him. You're gonna do dirty things to him. I'm gonna do very dirty things to him. <laughs> I'm excited, man. Black belt has superstars in it. Yeah. You know, guys like Lucas Lepree and yeah. Leandro Lowe and Buchecha and all that. They've been black belts for 10 fucking years. They've had that long to sharpen their skills against other black belt world class competitors. But I feel like the biggest difference is going to be pressure. And you know, every time I've, I've like gone to a gym and I've rolled with a black belt world champion, the biggest thing I took away from that is like, oh my God, like their pressure from everywhere is unreal. So it's like there's an adjustment period to that, and I do think like other gyms have an advantage in that they, you know they're training with other world class black belts. But at the same time, I feel like I just need to you know go as hard as I can every roll to recreate that pressure for myself. You know, just like if I could tap someone 200 times in a roll, you know that's what I need to do. You know, just go as hard as I possibly can. All right, guys, let's go quickly. If you don't want to go hard, don't tell everyone you're a fucking professional athlete. It's literally that simple. My teammates make me fucking tired. My teammates push me. Your teammates coddle your fucking ball sack. Nah, man. They fucking put my face into the mat, and then they elbow me, and then I try to sweep them, and I start coming up, and they shove my fucking head down. I have to earn my shit. You should have to earn your shit in the gym. If you don't, they're taking it easy on you. Maybe they don't respect you. You know, everyone here wants everyone else to get better. So the people around you make the gym. And the people going hard and trying to push you, it's like you're all going through the mud together. Instead of someone dragging the whole fucking sled by themselves, everyone here is pushing the sled together. You know what I mean? Everyone wants the same thing, and some people are a little further along in their career, some people are just starting out. It doesn't matter. Every single person wants the same thing here. So I'm, I'm lucky as fuck that I get to be part of building this, and then I get to help the next generation come up. Let's go. We're about to get it in and fucking do a 10 hour trip. Come on in. What's wrong with that three minute bomb though? Remember one thing, you fucking live for this shit. This is it. This is it. They wanted to do Daisy Fresh versus the world, so they fucking got it. <laughs>